Hello, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here. It's fabulous to have you here. I, it is now 10 o'clock at night. I've just published the video. Love you guys getting in. The notification squad was stronger than ever today. Oh my goodness, not ever have I seen so many people jump on that fast. Make sure you got your notifications on, guys. And I'm gonna narrate you through the day because it's so late. It's been one of those days. Okay, let's run you through it. First things first, wake up nice and early and I drive up to Norwich. The reason being, I need to pick up some things and I also need to buy some materials. The first place I ended up at was the wood store. I need to buy some wood for knife handles and especially for the project that obviously that we are working on today, which is the Damascus Steel Viking Battle Axe, which is awesome and which we're gonna be continuing to work on. But first, let's have a look at the wood that I got. I'm here in Norwich at the wood store and check out this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece of ash I've just found. That is going to make a lovely handle. And I'm now trying to think about what from here is gonna be good for, you know, maybe making knife handles. Got some rosewood, that would be lovely. There's also African black wood, babinga, I don't know what that is. And I'm gonna get some ebony too that they keep somewhere else. So I picked out these pieces of lignum vitae, this piece of rosewood, got a piece of oak, obviously the ash. I also just found this, what is that? Padauk, and look at that grain. This is gonna make some beautiful handles. After getting wood, I then went to my workshop, I picked up a couple of things, I loaded up the truck with some steel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then did some more errands, went to my apartment, and I then drove back here to this fabulous new workshop, and then Sam met me here, and we did some good work. We discussed some good things, we had some business phone calls, I edited yesterday's video, Sam did some more things, he emptied out the stuff from my truck, and then we had a very special delivery arrive, all the way from Australia. Sam. And what is all of this? This is burners. Lots of burners. Lots of burners. Of course, these are the burners that are coming in from Australia, which is very exciting. We're soon gonna have striking anvils in two. So I'll, I'll be sure to let you guys know when this stuff is all up on the website. Exciting things to come. And of course, when I was in Norwich, I also had the opportunity to pick up Old Glory. She had arrived. Isn't that beautiful? God, lovely flag. From there, it then got a little bit less fun. Um, because my, my accountant came, and yeah, it's not fun when your accountant visits. So the accountant, Sam, and I had a good long meeting, lots of, lots of chatting, and it was, it was just so enjoyable. I, I always loved meeting with my accountant and, and dis discussing things related to accounts and, and, and taxes. It's always the funnest thing in the world. We had that meeting, which is great, and of course now it's 10 o'clock in the evening. I've just uploaded the video, and I made myself a bowl of baked beans, and here we are, a bowl of baked beans in hand. About to fill up my stomach with the rest of this bowl. And of course, we're gonna crack on because today is part six of making the Damascus Steel Viking Battle Axe. We've got a beautiful piece of ash to work with. We're gonna make the handle after polishing up the blade. Mm, it's gonna be a great day. Thanks for joining me. I say it's gonna be a great day. It's 10 o'clock at night. The day is over, but mine's starting, so enjoy. <laughs> So I've got a piece of 2,000 grit wet and dry sandpaper, and I'm making sure to keep this wet as I do it, and I'm just lightly sanding over everything. Of course, the acid, what that'll go ahead and do is it etches away the carbon steel and it leaves the high nickel steel, in this case 15N20, it has about 2% nickel, 0.7% carbon, leaves the high nickel steel proud. Now that means I can now take this very fine grit sandpaper that won't go through the oxides that are created when we etch away the carbon steel, and I can lightly touch this up and polish just the nickel steel. I can see that we're pretty good all through here, however I have black spots here, and black spots all through here, and the nickel steel is still black there. So, a couple tricks I have is I'll sometimes take, let me go get it. A mechanical pencil, I mean it could be any pencil, but something that has an eraser on the end of it, and then I can go ahead and get that eraser behind the wet and dry, and on these small little details, especially where the pattern is bold, 
I can take the wet and dry and the eraser and I can just go over all the nickel bits. Now the oxide is pretty hard, you know, the oxide on the on the carbon steel, so it's not the end of the world if you do touch it. But you know, you just try and avoid it, especially in these bold areas. Okay, so I'm very, very nearly there. It's just a case of a little more work on all of the facets and a little more work here on the pole of the axe. We're, oh, 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 this thing is insane. It is out of this world. I am, I'm always excited, but I'm very excited now. I cannot wait to get this thing on a handle. There is that beautiful piece of ash back there that is just calling, calling this axe's name. Oh my goodness, just a little more work. I've now got this uh, buffed out to where I want it. So I'm taking some WD-40 and um, this obviously water displacement 40. This will get rid of all the water, which is pretty good. Then I can just wipe down the oil. So I've taken the WD-40 off and thanks to you commenters for letting me know, WD-40 actually apparently has some kind of corrosive, ever so slightly corrosive properties. So I'm gonna put some actual oil on now to properly protect this. So while that is now oiled up, I have this fantastic, this is one of the nicest pieces of ash I have ever seen. The grain is beautifully straight along this board and look at that end grain, that piece right here is just beautiful. This is going to make one hell of an incredible handle.
<laughs> it's now early in the morning on the next day. It was two o'clock in the morning, the last clip you saw. Had to get some sleep, but here we are. This now has a 120 grit machine finish on, uh, on most of the shaft there. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip the platen around on my little steel grinder, and we're gonna be using it on wood, but that's why it's a steel grinder with an E. We're gonna flip the platen around it, and we can use that slack belt and a 240 grit, and we're then gonna be rolling this thing around, evening out all the facets, making this as smooth as possible before we then hand sand this, bring this up to the finish that we want. We have one issue, however. Here on the end is indeed a little tiny crack. So what I'm gonna have to do is probably cut this off right about there and hope we get past the crack. Thankfully, however, even if we cut it off right about there, there's still a decent amount of palm swell where I don't think it's gonna be too much of an issue. <laughs> a stunning, stunning finish on this handle. I am really, really pleased with that. Obviously, the process that we did, we did 60, we did 120, we then went on slack belt, 240 grit. I then took 150 grit sandpaper, and I did it by hand this way, then up to 240 again, and this is just lovely. With a little bit of the wood dust, I then finished it off, rubbing it all on there, and this, once it's got some nice linseed oil on it, is just gonna be a stunning handle, and it's gonna work beautifully with this axe. Speaking of which, I now need to attach the axe to this. Thankfully, I've got plenty of meat in here to work with to be able to get a very good fit in this axe eye, so it is now simply a case of uh, roughing this out. Okay, so here's where I'm at. I have this cut down, so that'll stick out a nice little bit. I think the axe head'll probably sink down right about there once we start driving it. This, obviously, pretty nice fit up there. I made an African black wood wedge that'll go in there nicely, and it's gonna add to the overall aesthetics of this piece. Very excited. Now, however, I say excited, I'm actually kind of terrified because this is one of those moments where you start doing things and you can make big mistakes and problems. I am now going to put some oil, some linseed oil, on this shaft here so that lubricates it as I drive that onto our head. Then it'll kind of go on a little further, which is lovely. From there, some wood glue on the wedge. Drive the wedge in. Hopefully don't split the wedge. Hopefully it all goes well and hopefully not too many mistakes are made. Wait, scratch that thought, I'm being completely silly. I'm gonna sharpen this first. It's gonna be way easier to do this now than when I have a four foot long piece of wood sticking on it. So we are going to go to a trisect. We're gonna sharpen this. We'll then buff it, get rid of the, uh, get rid of the burr, and this thing should be nice and sharp. So the axe cuts, and it cuts rather sharply, might I add. I've got a bucket of linseed oil. There is the handle right here. I need to attach the two oil thing, drive it, hammer. Oh my goodness, that is so damn cool. I don't want to put too much force on this. When I do a hammer handle, like I'll take a, I'll take a hammer and I'll be wailing away on this, but because this has a slight curve there, I don't want to be doing too much 
hammering because I thought I don't want to break this handle, especially with all the work I put into it. So I want to be somewhat gentle. I want to put enough pressure that I'm going to uh, be pressurizing the pressure, uh, compressing the wood enough that we get a tight fit. But I don't want to do too much that we then kind of snap the handle up here where it curves. So I think I'm going to give it two more. Ah, here we go. Here is the wedge. I'm gonna take a little bit of wood glue before I put the, actually no, before I put this in, I'm gonna shave this down, cause I'll, no I don't need to shave it down, we're gonna put it in straight away. I'm gonna take some wood glue, and we're gonna put this in, and we're gonna drive that in. Now you see that gap, obviously, that there is between the wood and the eye itself? That's cause we have an hourglass hole right now, so it tapers this way, then tapers that way, the wood tapers into the first part of the hole, the hole then enlarges out the other way, so that when we then put a wedge in, it creates that mechanical fastening that'll then hold it where it needs to be. Um, I can't have the wedge fall out though, so I am going to use some wood glue, since I don't want to be putting a metal wedge in there to then secure this. Okay, let's find some wood glue. <clears throat> I want to be very careful now, um, because this African black wood is going to be very brittle. I don't want it to crack. Now, any crack itself isn't necessarily the end of the world, um, because a crack isn't going to affect the structure of this. Um, <laughs> it'll only affect the aesthetics. So a tiny crack won't affect the structure, and it might not affect the aesthetics. So the African blackwood wedge has now stopped out here on the ash, but I want to put the wedge down a little farther so we're getting even more kind of tension or compression in there. I'm going to find a piece of steel that matches the thickness of this African blackwood right there, and then we're going to use that piece of steel as a tool to drive that down deeper before, I mean, we have plenty of time before the glue sets, but before it does. Great. Oh, that's way better. I think that I'm ready to now shave off the material here, match that to the contours. I'll be able to use the small wheels on my steel grinder, which we're going to use on wood. I'll be able to use those small wheels and a fresh 60 grit to take that wood down. Then we can go to 120, maybe put some nice neat chamfers on it. But for sure, we are so close to this being done. It's just a case of getting the final touches on this. Time to do some hand sanding, buff it all up, oil the handle, linseed oil again, and then she's done. This is so <laughs> I want to cut something really badly. Look at that African blackwood wedge. God, that is so beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, we've done it. It's finished! <laughs> Holy moly! This is so cool! I just feel vicious! Let's go, let's go, let's go pillage some villages. I mean, I've, I've got the axe. We are also in Norfolk, which I believe historically- But I've got a Viking axe! And this is amazing! Okay, you guys asked for it and we made it. We made the Viking battle axe. And oh my goodness, this is so satisfying to celebrate. However, oh my goodness, you guys, you love the fantastic t-shirts. I was so excited that we have even more amazing t-shirts. This is my first ever sword. Look how beautiful the Damascus pattern is on the sword. That is available on the website, British Roots and Cowboy Boots. Because you know I love my British Roots and you know I love my Cowboy Boots. Our dear friend, Chef Mike. Chef Mike the Microwave, let us take a moment to remember him. Oh, how you will not be forgotten, Chef Mike. 
Here, rest in peace. This is for you, Chef Mike, and it's also for you guys, alexsteelshop.com, and of course, to commemorate the workshop that allowed me to start my YouTube channel, that allowed me to have so much fun and learn so much, Barker Street Forge. That workshop has incredible memories for me. I know that you guys that enjoyed the videos, you guys love Barker Street Forge. So this is to commemorate Barker Street Forge 2013 to 2017. And best of all, this axe, obviously, to celebrate. We're not just gonna make an axe, we're also, guys, there is an amazing t-shirt that you guys wanna check out. It just got made, and it is amazing. I don't have the t-shirt right here, but here it is. Isn't that amazing? You can have this axe, on your chest, isn't it awesome? AlexSteelShop.com. Not only can you have this incredible Viking axe on your chest, but once you have one of these t-shirts from the August lineup, we're gonna be doing a little competition. We're gonna be giving away a trip here to the workshop. We will fly you out here from wherever you are. You can come hang out with me, come hang out with Al Alex. Sam is, I'm Alex, Sam is Sam. You can come hang out with me, you can come hang out with Sam. We're gonna spend a day here in the workshop and you'll come be able to experience what it's like to make things and forge and throw sparks and do all these fun things. And the way you win is by posting a photo of yourself wearing one of the August t-shirts. Barker Street Forge. Rest in peace, Chef Mike. British roots and cowboy boots. My first ever sword. And take a photo of yourself wearing one of these t-shirts. Post it on Instagram, use hashtag Alex Steel, and we're gonna be picking the best photo, the coolest photo, the photo that makes us smile more, and we'll be bringing you out here. The new t-shirts are up on the website, and they are amazing. AlexSteelShop.com, you guys are gonna love them. I can't wait to see the photos of you guys with my first sword, with my battle axe, with Barker Street Forge, all of these t-shirts. I can't wait to meet one of you guys here at the workshop. And most of all, I hope that you have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'll see you tomorrow. AlexSteelShop.com for your t-shirts. Don't forget, have a great one.